Hi friends, this is uh, Arup Chakrabarti from Trivandrum, India, and I'm going to show you a case of routine phaco emulsification. I have no financial interest in the contents of uh, this presentation. This surgery will be performed under topical anesthesia. Two side ports are created using sharp MVR knives, one inferiorly and the second one superiorly. The anterior chamber is deepened and pressurized by injecting BSS. A temporal clear cordial incision is created. The anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue dye under an air bubble. This technique using air bubble results in adequate staining of the anterior capsule. The air bubble and the excess stain is removed from the anterior chamber. A modified soft shell technique will be employed. First, 2% HPMC is injected into the anterior chamber. Then underneath, Helon GV 1.4%, which is a cohesive OVD, is injected in front of the anterior capsule. Capsulorexis is initiated and continued with a bent 26 gauge needle. We plan to create a 5 mm rexis. The size of the rexis is controlled while initiating the rexis. The rexis diameter can be adjusted intraoperatively during the subsequent capsular tearing process. Because of the Helon GV, a significant drag is required to tear the anterior capsular flap. One could also use a rexis forceps instead. The rexis is completed from outside to inside and the capsular flap is removed, ensuring that there is no pedicle or breach connecting the capsular flap to the rest of the anterior capsule. A cortical cleaving hydrodissection is performed there is also an element of unintended hydrodelineation resulting in the golden ring sign, which is so clearly visible here. The nucleus is balloted posteriorly to let out the fluid accumulated behind the nucleus. FACO is then initiated with the sculpting settings. This is a sort of warming up before the main game of nucleus management begins. The FACO parameters are then changed to allow a safe chopping to take place. In this case, chopping is carried out using the Sinsky hook itself. The nucleus is chopped into multiple small pieces. The nucleus in this case appears quite brittle. Quadrant removal parameter settings are activated to remove the first loose uh, nucleus piece and the rest of the nuclear disassembly is continued using the same settings. The manipulations and the fragment consumption are all confined to a posterior plane away from the corneal endothelium. There is a thick layer of epinucleus as a result of the hydrodelineation that had unintentionally taken place. Most of the epinucleus is removed using the epinucleus settings on the machine panel. Rest of the residual lens matter will be removed using a bimanual irrigation aspiration approach. Though the bimanual irrigation aspiration technique is slower than the coaxial one or the one using Simcoe cannula, it is a much more controlled and safer 
technique. The hand pieces can be switched, thereby giving 360 degree access to all portions of the capsular bag. Once uh, the cortical material and all the fibers are completely removed, the bag is partially filled with a cohesive OVD. Residual posterior capsular cellular component is polished. I don't routinely polish the undersurface of the anterior capsule. The anterior chamber is again deepened with a cohesive OVD. We will be implanting a single piece hydrophobic acrylic lens into the capsular bag. The left hand instrument stabilizes the occasional bizarre unfolding of the trailing haptic. The entire lens is maneuvered into the capsular bag before complete unfolding of the haptics. The corneal incisions uh, will be hydrated, stromal hydration as well as the main clear corneal incision before the residual OVD is uh, removed from uh, the anterior chamber and the capsular bag. The OVD removal should be as complete as possible. And one might have to go behind the optic, as you see here, to access the trapped OVD. At the conclusion of the surgery, the intracural lens centration is ensured. We also ensure that the eye is within its physiological intracular pressure range. We also confirm with a vexel that the main clear corneal incision is not leaky. It is watertight. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.